Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at cones of depression, static water levels, pumping water levels, drawdown, uh, a whole bunch of different concepts and terminology that I'd like to run through, um, but basically all happens as a result of pumping water from an aquifer, okay? So here we have my little diagram of an aquifer and a well. So this white thing is our well. Uh, down here in these black slots, that's our screen. Okay, so that's where water enters the well. Here we have our aquifer. Here we have our water table there. And here's the water inside the aquifer. So the first thing we need to define and look at is what's called the static water level. Okay, let me write that down because that's an important concept. Static water level. And the static water level is the elevation of water in that aquifer when nothing is happening to that aquifer. Okay, nothing's getting pumped out, nothing's getting put in, it's just the normal, natural elevation of water in the aquifer. Okay, and I'd like to point out that the static water level is the same outside of the well as it is inside, okay? There's no difference there. And that's because this well is open to this aquifer uh, through the screen and water can enter into the well through that screen and, and kind of balance out at the static water level. So now let's look at what happens once we turn on the pump that's inside this well and start pumping water out of the aquifer through the well. So the first thing that's going to happen is that this water level inside of the well is going to drop, right? Because it's closest to the pump. So that's going to drop down to some level, maybe right there. And eventually it'll stabilize and water from outside of the well in the aquifer is going to enter the well through that screen, right? We're going to draw water from the aquifer into the well once we start pumping. And initially, water is going to come from all directions in this aquifer, from up top here, down, and then from the sides. And so the, the further away we are from the well, the less affected the water is going to be. So the water maybe right here is not as affected as it is right as the water right here, okay? The water right here is going to be moving quick right into that well. The water out here may be moving, but it'll be moving a lot more slowly. And how much the water here is affected depends on a few things that we'll get into eventually. Okay, so let's say we we pumped on this well, we've pulled the water down into the well, and we've seen the water level inside the well, our static water level inside the well dropped and the water level outside of the well is gonna to drop too, okay? And we're gonna form what's called a cone of depression, okay? And it's gonna look like this, okay? This is our cone of depression. And let's write that down too, because that's an important concept. And so this cone of depression takes on this shape because like I said earlier, the water closest to the well is more affected than water further out from the well, okay? So water right here is going to be moving faster towards the well than it is out here. And I think it's easy to, uh, to intuitively think that water right here is going to be greater, is going to be more affected than water out here, right? I mean, it's, it's closer to the well. Uh, so you just intuitively, you can figure out that that's the case. But let's do a little, I'm going to show you why that is. I'm going to get all rid of that stuff right now. And let's start new colors here. Okay, so imagine, imagine, so remember this is a three-dimensional situation, right? We got a two-dimensional representation of it, but this is in three dimensions in real life, right? So imagine, so this, this well is a cylinder, right? Now imagine some imaginary cylinders outside of the well in the aquifer. Okay, so imagine we have <clears throat> a cylinder right there. And then imagine we have a larger cylinder out here. And imagine we're, we're going to pump water from these cylinders, okay? And they're imaginary, obviously, but we're just creating some, some boundaries that we can think about here. So let's call this guy cylinder one and we'll say we'll say it's volume one. 
okay? Because we're going to imagine the volume of this cylinder, of this imaginary cylinder, and we'll call this volume 2, the volume of this imagin imaginary cylinder 2, okay? So it is easy to see that the smaller cylinder is a smaller volume than volume 2, right? Than the, the, the volume of cylinder 2. It's less than the volume of cylinder 2. So if you imagine pumping water from each of these cylinders, which one is going to empty first? It's going to be the smaller volume, right? It's going to be the smaller cylinder because it's a smaller volume of water and it'll, it'll empty quicker because it's smaller volume. Makes sense, right? And that's why this cone of depression forms is because in the first cylinder, the water is going to be drawn down much quicker. And so the water in that cylinder is going to empty. So you're going to, you're going to create this curve there of where the water is being drawn down. And then out here, it's going to happen eventually, maybe, uh, but it's going to take a lot longer to get there. So that's why you create this cone of depression. Okay, hopefully that made sense and not too confusing. So let's go back to our, our drawing here. And we're going to define a couple other important points, okay? So we've, we've labeled the static water level. We've labeled our cone of depression here. Another point we need to, or another term that we need to define is what's called our pumping water level. And you can probably surmise what that is right now, right? It's going to be the water level inside of the well. So it's going to be right there when we're pumping the well. And it's going to be the, the equilibrated level inside the well. So it's not going to be right after we turn the pump on. It's going to be once it stabilizes, right? Because the water level inside the well is going to drop as we're pumping. And eventually it'll reach some stable point right there. And that stable level is called the pumping water level. Okay? So we have the static water level, which was up here before we turn the pump on. And then we have the pumping water level, which is down here after we've pumped the well and we've reached some sort of stable point. And the difference between these two levels is what we call drawdown. Let me write that down too. So drawdown is a pretty self-explanatory name, I think. It's the amount of, uh, of water elevation that gets drawn down inside the well after pumping for a period of time, at which point the pumping water level is established. And drawdown is an important concept because it determines how much water we can pump out of this well. Okay, because we can't have the drawdown go past our pump because then we won't be pumping water anymore. Okay, one other term I want to define here and I think I'll call it good for this video because I might be getting too, I might be laying a little too much information on you, but it's going to be called the radius of influence. And it's related to the cone of depression. And another self-explanatory name, I think, it's just the radius that the, uh, the cone of depression reaches out to from the well, okay? It's radius of influence. So it's how far out the water table is going to be affected by our pumping. Make sense? It's just, it's just a radius from the well to the edge of the corner depression. Okay, so th I think this is a good stopping point. I don't want to bombard you with too much information here. Uh, but in the next video, we're going to be talking about the cone of depression a little more and how far out it can reach and how certain properties of the aquifer and pumping rates and some other things determine how far out this cone of depression will reach. So I'll put that video uh, in the comment section. Uh, if you found this useful, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.